Yo, Mr. Vinwicky, what is up? Hey man, I wanted to ask you, what are you planning to do now that the Gallardo project is finished? Well, I kind of have my hands full. I mean, I have my Supra, my Bentley, the Ferrari, the SL55, and the S600 daily driver. I mean, it's it's a lot to do at once. Ah, I understand. So that means you won't be interested in this Lamborghini Murcielago that I just found for you out in LA? Dude, I can't afford one of those. It would have to be an insane deal for me to even consider it. And I'd have to go across the country and back just to get it. Well, what if I told you it was the hero car from Fate of the Furious? Holy crap, really? Oh, and that's not even the best part. It's the cheapest one. Cheapest one in the country? Yeah, I've done that before. No, no, no. Not the cheapest one in the U.S. The cheapest one in the world. And you just have to go out there and get it. What do you think? Freddy? Freddy, can you hear me? Freddy, are you still there? Can you hear me? Did you catch on fire? I have a little bit of a confession to make. When I initially bought this car, the country's cheapest Lamborghini Gallardo about a year ago, I really didn't know how I was gonna top it. All the cars that were more powerful and more exclusive were just out of my price range, and the ones that I could afford weren't really that interesting. That is, until I found this. A 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago that not only was the cheapest one in the country by a big, big margin, but it was also used on screen in one of the most popular, one of the highest grossing car films of all time. So before I go into everything that makes this particular car really, really special, I'm gonna address a subject that you guys are probably writing about right now in the comments, and that's the price. And you're gonna wanna sit down for this. I'm also gonna take some time to introduce and thank today's sponsor, Autotempest.com, because without them, I would not have bought this car. Let me show you what I mean. Now you guys know I love using Auto Tempest for research and window shopping because you get all the top car listing sites in one click. And you can compare with all of Craigslist, not just your one local area, which basically gives you a blueprint for what the used car market is doing and where you can find a great deal on the exact car you want. So experiment time. If we use Auto Tempest to find an average priced Lamborghini Murcielago, not even the cheapest one in the country, not a fire damage, triple salvage car, just a normal driver, you'll end up with a lot of really big numbers. So let's go and uh, check that out right now. Lamborghini, Murcielago, or as the UK guys like to call it, Murcielago. And within any mileage of uh, 90210, because apparently uh, we live in Beverly Hills, and we hit search. And immediately, Auto Tempest pulls up every relevant listing from all the top car listing sites. So let's check these out. So we have a 2005 for 139.8. A bunch of them for around 140. We have around 150, 155, 160, 162. If we keep scrolling, we realize that the average price of one of these cars ranges between 150 and 250 thousand dollars, which is known to most people as a price of a nice house. But we can get a little bit more specific. While all Mercy Lagos came with the same basic six-speed transmission, there is a huge price difference between the automated e-gear manual transmission and the actual manual transmission with three pedals. So much, in fact, that a late model manual transmission LP640 goes for more than $300,000 on the used market. Now, take a wild guess which transmission my car has. Oh yeah. But you guys know me, and if you don't, hi, my name is Tavarish, and I have a car cane addiction. I wouldn't come close to paying 300 grand for this or any car, but when my friend Ed Bullion of VinWiki told me that this car was available for $80,000, then all the research and window shopping that I did on Auto Tempest paid off in a huge way. Let's go over some numbers. This 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago has a hand-built 6.2 liter V12, producing around 580 horsepower, going to all four wheels through a six-speed manual transmission. It also has an incredibly wide stance and the big boy Lambo doors that my other Lambo doesn't have. In addition, every body panel on this car, save for some of the frame, which is aluminum, and the doors, which are steel, is made of carbon fiber, which in 2003 was extremely expensive. So for 80 grand, I think this is the deal of the century. And from where I'm standing, I can't see why this car was so cheap. Oh, I see it now. Uh, all right, that's a good noise for that to make. Okay, we just put that right there and uh, yeah let's just call that 
done. There is a lot of old school Lamborghini in this car. This V12 is the same basic block design that they used since the 1960s with the 350 GT. And even though this is a technically lightweight carbon fiber built sports car, it still weighs the better part of two tons. But despite that, it can do zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds and has an utterly insane top speed of over 205 miles an hour. And fun fact, this car held the record for worst fuel economy of any passenger car ever. This had eight miles to the gallon city and 12 highway. I'm not even mad, I'm kind of impressed. Now this isn't your garden variety Murcielago. This one was modified specifically for Fast and Furious 8 with this Arancio Argos paint job that's actually from the Aventador and also this Veilside Premier 4509 body kit. They also fitted these massive 19 inch front and 20 inch rear Triumph multi-piece wheels with really wide 345 series tires. And the studio also made some choice interior modifications with some weight reduction to make sure the actors were as safe as possible. So the actors got a full roll cage from the front to the back, which is the first time I've ever seen anything like this in a Lamborghini. And there's also a racing seat installed there's a racing seat in here. All these modifications added up to the fact that this car was not only as good a performer as it could be, but it was also as safe as it could be. So yes, Tyrese did actually drive this car. No, 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 this is not good! What's the matter, Roman? You loving that Lambo now? Now, I'm not usually a guy who cares about provenance or branding. I just like a car with a story. And let me tell you, the story with this car Pretty good. This car spent three months filming in Iceland in conditions that a Lamborghini Murcielago would never usually see. Now keep in mind, in the movie, this car met its icy death at the bottom of a lake. And then there was a comical scene where Tyrese grabbed onto the door, which was held on by a grappling hook to Ludacris's tank. It was kind of ridiculous. This car did not suffer any sort of fate like that. This car was actually the hero car. Wow, I'm in love. Again, no, no. That's a million dollar show car. So for the filming of the movie, they had three running Lamborghinis and this was the only surviving one after all was completed. So you can say that this thing went running, but it didn't go swimming. I don't wanna go swimming, no! But the question remains, does this actually run? And the answer is, well, let's find out. Put that right there. That should be, okay. It's a little bit of a process. Needs a battery box because all good cars come with a totally dead battery. Connect that right there and right here. Now the interesting bit about this car is that you can actually start it from the back. It's actually because the film studio had a problem with the key not recognizing the ECU. So they hardwired a solution, which was just a button in the back by the engine. But the problem is you can't take the key out of the ignition. So the key has to be in the on position. Just put that to the on position, make sure it's in neutral. Otherwise the car is gonna run away from you. And we're gonna flip the switch for, there we go. Gonna flip that switch. There's things happening. And we're gonna turn on the battery box. Okay, that's gonna work. Then we press the button. Woo! It's nice and quiet, you know? Yeah, so it's a, oh, okay. All right, all joking aside, this car needs a lot of work and not just what I've showed you. Uh, this car needs so much underneath the skin. The paint job is really bad. It's gonna need to all come off and I'm gonna need to do some real R&R &R to all the mechanical systems, the electrical systems and get some new interior bits because there's a lot missing here. This is probably my most ambitious project next to the Ferrari 
or the Bentley or my other Lamborghini. This is one of my most ambitious projects and I'm super proud of getting this car and I'm super excited to work on it. So make sure you subscribe to my channel, turn notifications on because you're not gonna wanna miss this and all my other projects. So I'd like to give a big thanks to today's sponsor, Autotempest.com. Without them, I wouldn't have bought this car or that car or any of my other cars. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching. You guys are why I do what I do. And I hope you stay tuned because this thing is gonna be absolutely epic. But until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like this that are famous and look awesome and need a lot of work, you guys need to wrench every day.